So, how do you set up VIP limits? Let's find out. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Vibor. I am an executive agile and product coach based in Canada. My last video was in June last year. Keeping this in mind, I welcome you all to a series of videos on setting up a Kanban board. That's quite some time. And since then, I moved to a new home and it took some time for me and my family to settle in. But as promised, I am back with a video explaining in very simple words how to calculate VIP limits for your Kanban board. Let's dive right in. First, I would like you to imagine a couple of things. Picture your team on their first day working with a Kanban board. Now, think about not having any data about your team's performance, their experience, or how fast they work. Now, the challenge is how do we set up a Kanban board without this information? As we all know, there are many benefits of setting up VIP limits, which I've already discussed in previous videos. So if you haven't already, check those out first. Given our current situation, which is a team just starting with a Kanban board and no performance data, we can start in three steps. First is to create a Kanban board. Let's say your team creates a Kanban board with five columns. Analysis, design, develop, test, and deploy. The second step is to count the number of people working on each column in the Kanban board. This helps us estimate how much work each column can handle. For example, let's say there are two business analysts in the analysis column, three UI UX professionals in the design column, four developers in the develop, three testers in the test, and one person handling the deployment. When lacking performance data, a good starting point is setting up the initial VIP limit for each column equal to the number of the team members working on that column. This way, each person has at least one item to work on at any given time. I know, it's not perfect, but it's a solid place to start. So our initial VIP limits are two for analysis, three for design, four for develop, three for test, and one for deployment. Step number three. Once the team starts using the Kanban board, monitor their progress. Look for the bottlenecks or idle team members and adjust the VIP limits as needed to ensure a smooth workflow and keep everyone engaged. To identify bottlenecks, keep an eye on the cumulative flowchart. More on cumulative flowcharts in a future video. Now, at this point, all you have to do is observe your team's performance for at least seven to eight weeks. This time frame should be enough to identify which column takes the longest to complete, or in other words, in which column the team is the slowest. Knowing the slowest column is all the data we need to determine the actual VIP limits for the Kanban board. With that information, let's move on to the next section of the video, calculating VIP limits when we have data on the team's performance available. Let's say the analysis column receives six items per month with two people working on it. Design gets five items with three people. Development gets four items with four people. Test gets six items with three people. And deployment gets seven items with one person. Looking at this information, it's clear that the development column is the slowest. It has the most people working on it and delivers the fewest items. And as I said before, this is all the data we need to set up the actual VIP limits. With the slowest column, which is the development column, and the number of people working on it, which is four developers, we can set the VIP limits for that column to be equal to the number of people working in that column, plus 50% buffer. In our case, with four developers, the VIP limit for the development column would be six, and that's it. This is our first VIP limit, which will serve as a baseline for all other VIP limits. To do this, divide the throughput of the slowest column by the average rate for each step. This will give us the number of people needed for each step to match the slowest step's throughput. The throughput for the development column is four items per month multiplied by four developers equals 16 items per month. So the number of people we need in each column to match the development column is for analysis, 16 items per month divided by six items per month per person equals 2.67, rounding it off to three, which comes to three analysts in the analysis column. For design, 16 items per month divided by five items per month per person equals 3.2, which gives us four designers. For the test column, 16 items per month divided by six items per month per person equals 2.67, rounding it off to three, which gives us three testers in the test column. For deploy, 16 items per month divided by seven items per month per person equals 2.29, rounding it off to three, which gives us three deployers. Now, after doing all of this, 
calculating the VIP limits is as simple as adding 50% buffer to each of these numbers. Adding 50% buffer to research will give us a VIP limit of 5 in the research column, 6 in the design column, 5 in the test column, and 5 in the deploy column. There you have it. Your Kanban board is now set up with well calculated VIP limits. Remember, limits may change. So make sure to keep monitoring the team's progress and adjust the VIP limits as needed to optimize your workflow. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to leave your valuable feedback in the comments. I'll see you very soon in the next video.